Today on the channel, I'm gonna show you the watches I saw this year, which blew my mind. Let's get into it. I just came back from the world's biggest watch show in Geneva and it was crazy. The amount of watches, cool people, delicious food and new memories always makes me remember why I love this industry so much. In today's video, I will show you my favorite watches from the big brands and my favorite watches from the small brands that I saw during the crazy week. Comment down below which one you liked the most or if I missed anything fun. Before the watch fair started, I was lucky to witness the launch of a new brand. Jean-Claude Beaver and Pierre Beaver presented their beautiful watches. They started really strong by making a watch with the highest possible finishing levels and expertise. Knowing Beaver's history and achievements, I didn't expect anything less to be honest. I saw all the watches in person and here's a clip of my favorite grey dial version where you can hear the Carillion Turbion chime. I'm working on getting the watches and the guys in my studio, so stay tuned for that in the future. Rolex shocked the world with their crazy puzzle and bubbles or celebration watches. I was very amused by what they launched because they're such a conservative brand. We're used to Rolex releasing novelties with minute changes and this year they really went all in and surprised all. At first I also met a few old friends which I know since many many years. My Instagram friend Vertigo1983 had this beautiful Roger de Vuille on his wrist. It's his father's watch since many years and it's a perpetual calendar chronograph with a mother of pearl dial and stunning movement. I wish the brand would bring back this watch, it's really nice. Another big brand which surprised me in a positive way was Jeger Le Coultre. The new Reverso Tribute Chronograph is stunning. Business in the front and party in the back kind of watch. Despite many brands increasing their prices, this one felt reasonable to me. At 21,400 US dollars for the stainless steel version, I think it's quite fair for what you get. In between all the watch brand appointments, we also shot some content. We shot a video for Konstantin Bushman's YouTube channel, that's the Brabus owner obviously, and also with Nico Leonard. I can't wait to see the final video, we had a lot of fun, and if you haven't checked out the watch collection videos I did with them, Click on the links in my video description, you will not regret it. Next up is the incredible Mechanical Bee by Jean-Michel Faure, I hope I pronounced the name correctly. He's a watchmaker from Besançon, France, who makes wristwatches as well as mechanical art. This bee was sold already, but it was great to see it in person. A little hint, he's coming to my studio in Zurich next week and we will do a nice video together so you can see it all in detail. We also visited our friends at Jacob & Co, where Benjamin Rabo showed us some insane new watches. I appreciate the brand for coming up with these mouth-watering pieces of art which show you the time. My favorites are of course the Bugatti Chiron models, but for this year, I saw the new Astronomia Revolution with the biggest running seconds indicator in the watch industry. The whole movement makes a rotation in only one minute, which is unheard of. What's also impressive were the honeycomb polished mirrors on the base plate. Of course, the talk of the town was the 20 million US dollar billionaire timeless treasure watch, which I also had the pleasure of seeing and photographing, but that's a story for another time. On the way to an event, I saw an ice sculpture in the middle of the street, which blew me away. It was clearly commissioned by Mont Blanc for marketing purposes, but it worked. As you can see, it's my video. The details of the watch and the logo on the DAO were incredible, so well done Mr. Ice Sculpture. So at an event I saw another sick watch, a custom Sartori Bia. I thought the DAO is made out of mother of pearl, but it's not. It's a very thin slice of a computer chip actually, which is insane. Easily one of the nicest DAOs I've seen that week, so special. It was also nice to visit the new Ambient F Madhouse, where I saw 3D prototypes of their watches, some cool art pieces in the house, as well as the new Ambient for Patrick calendar with a salmon base plate, really cool piece. One day I will own a nice Ambient F, that's my goal. As a watch collector I really want that and I'm looking forward to making a video about it. It's not only watches that you see at this show, sometimes also clocks. It's always fun to visit my friend Mickey Aleta, who we had on the channel before when we shot a video in Dubai with him. This new creation was super cool, commissioned by a client of his and just so well made and unique. If you like clocks or you're looking for an art piece for your home or office, then Lepe clocks are also something you should check out. Their new sleek regatta line is incredible. Available in many different colors, you can see exposed movement, balance wheel beating and the neatly decorated components. They are really on top of the game when it comes to clocks. I can't emphasize enough how nice it is to see these watches in person, from Instagram pictures to actually holding them. I had a great chat with Anton Suhanov, his new watch, the Racer Retro with his Kertine style, GMT window and retrograde time indication is also one of my favorite watches from the show. 
The quality of the watch speaks for itself once you see and touch it in person. Well done, Anton. Good job. If you saw my video with the guys from Patreon with that, you will enjoy this a lot. The new Mono Pusher Split Second Chronograph is out of this world. The dial, the movement and the case proportions are just incredible. Easily one of the nicest chronograph movements released in the last years, if you ask me. I can't wait to put this watch under my camera and shoot it properly, so I do it justice. Well done guys, another home run. After a very successful video, I had the pleasure to meet Jiro Katayama, the mastermind behind Otsuka Lotec. The video I made about my watch had a great response with my community and it was a nice 360 movement when I finally met the guy in person. He's kind and unique as his watches. I have good news to tell you that he's gonna be making more watches this year, so please check out his website to see how you can buy yours. Next to him was the myth legend Mr. Hajime Asaoka. It's not often that you get to see him and especially his watches. I had the pleasure to see the Turbion Noir watch, a sold out piece obviously, a masterpiece of details, execution and finishing. His watches never disappoint in person, I didn't find any mistake. And meeting him again was surreal as well. Jacques Hedro is going into a new direction with their beautiful watches. I had the pleasure of seeing quite a few novelties from Turbions, Automaton Dragons, as well as their newest piece with the Rolling Stones collaboration. The one I had the most fun with was definitely the Charming Bird, so here's a video from the restaurant I was in, so you can see the bird chiming and chirping. Enjoy guys! Back at the Watches and Wonders show, Ulysse Tardin had one of the coolest boots. They had a giant copy of the legendary Freak watch, which was insane to see and walk around. They also had a paper artist by the name of Labeck, who did a miniature paper Freak watches. Very cool for you and to support young artists like this. And check out Labeck's Instagram account, he's a really cool dude. It was nice to see you, man. It was a pleasure also to check out the new Freak and compare it with the old one. On my way to another meeting, I bumped into the next generation of watchmakers, Alexander Heisman and Victor Monin. Their chiming jump hour watches were a joy to check out. The two young prominent watchmakers, which I hope to see more in the future. Beauvais also went all out with their private viewing at a lake villa in Geneva, which was beautiful. You were able to see the engraver working on the movements, an incredible view of the lake and of course their beautiful watches. The one I liked a lot was the Battista Turbion with a symmetrical movement from both sides and a nice nice sapphire case. What also mesmerized me was a new skeleton piece, the Virtuoso 11 with so much hand engraving and precision watchmaking that I just had to take a loop to it. There's many watches I saw and this video could go on for another hour at least. Let's end the video with one of my favorite watchmakers, Konstantin Chaikin. We played with his Smilodon watch with its unique day of the week indication. The prehistoric saber to tiger's jaw indicates the day of the night. It's a very fun watch packed with a lot of serious watchmaking. These are some of my favorite watches of 2023 so far. Let me know which ones are yours in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up and share with a friend. And as always guys, I'll see you next week.